What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Wise here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs, leaders, and you know, some you've heard of, some you've never heard of. Kim, I like hearing about the challenge stories. So, you know, I had someone on uh, Moise Navone, who was the founding engineer at Mobileye, and they had a journey, and they were acquired by Intel for thirteen point two billion dollars. Um, but was struck. Uh, what struck me during the interview was that multiple times they made sacrifices and had to take pay cuts and he had to go back to his family and tell the kids we're pulling you out of all extracurricular activities because we can't afford it and so that's like the true journey of you know, we hear about these success stories but the the you know the ups and downs that people go through to get there is tremendous so check out more episodes in inspiredinsider.com and this episode is brought to you by rise 25 which i co-founded with my business partner john corcoran who who Kim also knows, and uh, Kim's also been on um, Smart Business Revolution, so check that out. And uh, Rise25, we help B2B businesses connect to their dream 100 clients and referral partners and help you run your podcast. So essentially, and get ROI, which is important, which we'll talk about with Kim, making sure people get ROI from social media. And just like Kim thinks, you must be in social media, and must get ROI from social media is how we feel about podcasting. Okay, it's been the best thing I've done for my business and my life because I've met business partner, um, gone to people's weddings, I've gone on family vacations with people. Um, and so check out rise25.com uh, and you can email us at support at rise25media.com if you have questions about podcasting and clients that we have worked with, Harvard Alumni Group, Berkshire Hathaway Company, SaaS companies, and many more. So check it out. Um, I am excited to introduce today's guest, um, who I've known for a long time, Kim Walsh Phillips, who has put more than a billion dollars in her clients' pockets through direct response social media marketing. And Kim is a multi seven figure business entrepreneur. Most importantly, she's a lover of all things Disney. And, you know, she's the best selling author of No BS Guide to Direct Response Social Media Marketing with Dan Kennedy. You can check it out at nobsbookbonus.com, nobsbookbonus.com and her company, PowerfulProfessionals.com. And you know she's spoken all over the world, Moscow, Dubai, Traffic and Conversion, GKIC Super Conferences, Kevin O'Leary, Shark Tank, Meetup. I'm sure I'm missing a few, Kim, but um, thanks for joining me. You know, um, I always ask Kim, since it's Inspired Insider, what has been a load moment you had to push through and a proud moment? I wanted to do, you know, for you, a hustle moment. Not, uh, you know, we'll talk about the low moment, proud moment, but there's a hustle moment that I still remember from we talked, it was almost five years ago that we were talking about this topic. And I still remember the story um, when you were young and it was your parents' anniversary. I wonder if you could quickly tell that story. I was 13 and my parents had a big anniversary coming up and I didn't have the money to pay for a party because I had no money and I have a job. But I thought of a way that I could pay for it by collecting cans and bringing them. I lived in New York at the time, and they have a deposit per bottle that you can get back. And so I went around the neighborhood collecting cans long enough to bet get $95, which, of course, seemed like everything in the world to me at that time, which gave me enough money to pay for a nice Italian dinner to be catered, and I could take care of the party fees myself. And that's really... Just one of many examples of the amazing entrepreneurs that are probably watching right now, because we all know when you don't have the resources, that doesn't mean you say no, that means you get resourceful. And so I've definitely, throughout the years, used opportunities in front of me to say, what do I want and how am I going to get it? How can I make this work for me um, based on what I have available and what I can put together myself? You inspired the hustle moment. I think this is going to be like a staple on the show now. The Kim Walsh uh -huh. film. Hustle moment. Um, thanks. For sure. <laughs> um, low point that you pushed through um, in your career, like I was mentioning the front of the the interview. You know, you've had very very successful um, agencies and products and all of this, and you make it look seamless and easy. But um, there's been a journey to that. 
There's definitely been. I've had a lot of low moments. Uh, one of the worst was back before I knew about direct response and I had not figured out so many of the things. I had to hawk my engagement ring to make payroll. And so I'm in the town pawn shop, which I'd never been in before. And as the guy's asking me what I wanted for my ring, I didn't know that you're not supposed to give honest answers, right? To like this $10,000 ring that I got $1,300 for just so I can make payroll. I had that moment. I had a time mm. where I got a letter from my bank saying they weren't going to cover my overdraft protection anymore while I was home with my newborn baby and I didn't know how I was going to do it. Like there's been a lot of moments that we've held on for dear life. I've leaned into my faith and then pulled all of my resources together to get through it. I mean, I was able to grow my agency literally from declaring bankruptcy at one point to selling it um, for a really good exit to then growing our coaching company in three years from zero to making the Inc. 5000 list. So it, these things are possible. It's about bullheaded determination, but not continuing to do things that aren't working. When something isn't working, it doesn't mean working more is the answer. More of the thing that wasn't working before is not the answer. Instead, finding the strategies that have worked from others, the people that you're willing to trade places with because they've had the success that you want and copy what they do. Find their blueprints instead of trying to constantly reinvent the wheel so you can actually achieve what you're trying to accomplish. Kim, why, what causes you to not give up in those moments? You know, like you could have given up at any of those points. Um, and like, yep, yeah, throw your hands in the air. I had, uh, you know, it's, it's, thanks for sharing that must've been like, just such a, I can't even imagine how, uh, what a tough moment that would be. Um, what goes through your mind at that point, just to keep pushing forward? There's no, it doesn't seem like that's even an option, not an option for you. One thing is that I've, I've had in the very beginning, I've had people work for me. And so I have definitely felt a, an obligation to them that they believed enough in me to serve me. And so I'm going to make sure I can always serve them. I've definitely gone in without payroll myself for months and months and months and have got deep into debt while I was still paying them, never letting them know. And that that's just more my personality, I think, than anything. I feel a deep um, connection obligation to my fellow human man, whether or not that smart business probably isn't. And But that I'm not going to change who I am. Like I totally accept that about myself. But at the same time, I, when I mentioned my faith, that's not an accident. I feel, literally feel a calling to do what I do, that I was put on this earth specifically, and so I get all emotional. I was put on this earth so that there are people out there that won't go through what I went through. There were people on this earth that woke up today thinking, I don't know if I can do this anymore, but they have something that can change the world. They have a message that literally was the prayer request of somebody who woke up today. And if, if I don't show them how they can tell others their message, they never will. And so I know that that's why I was put on this earth. And so there isn't an option for me to stop because I believe my creator created me with that purpose. And so I am driven every single day to reach as many people as I can and tell them how to do it so that they can serve the world in the way that they were created to do it. Thank you. Yeah, totally. Um, on the flip side, a proud moment from people actually listening to you and you changing the world and what's been proud moment for you? Opening up that Inc. 5000 letter with my two daughters and seeing that I was named 475. I did it live on Facebook because I didn't know where I had ranked and what had happened, but getting them all, and not only were they beside me, but they were beside me right when they came off the bus, which is when I saw that package because I had changed my lifestyle in a way that I could be with them every day. Got rid of the nanny changed my company. And I'm like, I'm going to make my company grow, but in a way that allows me to still be there for my daughters and not miss them growing up. So they're, they're with me. They've come off the bus. I'm present and we're opening up this package together and they get to see that their mama ranked four, seven, five. And that was mm. one of the happiest, most proud moments of my career. And then your daughters, what, what do you feel like they've learned from you? A lot of things. I mean, my Katie is, I think, secretly plotting to take over my company. <laughs> pretty sure. she, she's a drawing of her at, at computer with lots of money coming out of it and a mustache on me. So something's happening there. Um, but, she, but yeah, she has learned. She could tell you right now. She knew this since she was five. She hears other people speak. She knows there are two things people are most focused on, love and money. And your messaging needs to tell people how they're going to get one or the other. So hmm. she gets right to the heart of it right away. 
Um, my other daughter, um, Bella, has seen how all the work that has to go involved with being an entrepreneur. She's not a huge fan of that right now, but so she but she gets it that it's not like one thing or an easy button. There's the many little steps we take in order to have the success that we want. And so it's been they're they're different, right? One loves to have like the, the shine and the spotlight on and the other one is more process oriented and introverted um but they both had really fun moments you know coming up on stage and saying things and being part of that journey that's been awesome you know kim thank you um i want to next year i want to read the book uh, the no bs guide to love or money with kim <laughs> and katie yeah, okay so i want to read that book in the next year but thank you everyone check out nobsbookbonus.com, powerfulprofessionals.com. Kim, it's always amazing to be with you. So thank you. Oh, it's been so great being your friend. Mm -hmm. And I loved watching your journey. And thank you for having me on your show today. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.